Okay, all right, this is Gary Palmer, and today we're down at the Coast Guard Station in Brookings on the Checo River, and I'm excited to be talking to Petty Officer Brian Covey about um, uh, safe boating here in this area. And Brian, well, Julie and I are fanatic fishermen here on the Oregon coast, and the audience for, uh, for our podcasts also are the same. We're always concerned when we cross the bar and go out in the ocean, and especially a bar we don't know. And so w I'd like today to talk about people that fish that would come here, particularly that are not familiar with this bar, but anyone, and talk about you know what the Coast Guard does here and give us some information that would help people be safe as they as they fish out of here so uh, but first tell a little about yourself how long you've been in the Coast Guard and um, and maybe where you served uh, this way yeah oh, my name is Brian Covey I've been in the Coast Guard for uh, approximately 12 years started out my career in uh, Sheboygan Wisconsin at a small boat station yeah. did four years there and then I transferred from there to uh, Morro Bay California uh, surf station down there and I was there for seven years and I've just uh, arrived here in Checo River just about a year ago. So awesome, awesome. So, so what um, what what are the things that if someone's going to launch here uh, and they're going to go out across, what what would you like them? What interaction would you like them to have with the Coast Guard as far as like radio protocol? Do you want them to call and say, you know, we're going to go out and we have two POBs and we. Uh, or, or do you want them just to check the lights and just go out and then what, what, what would you like, like people to do? There's a number of different things that, uh, that you can do. Uh, one of the, the easiest thing is, is to call the station on the telephone and ask what the current bar conditions are. Ask if there's any restrictions on the bar or anything of that nature. Okay. And then uh, just be really aware of your surroundings. There's uh, flashing lights at the boat ramp. We have flashing lights. Uh, at the station, they're, they're rough bar lights, so when that bar is getting rough or it's restricted in any way, uh, those lights are flashing to warn you. Uh, we also put a broadcast out whenever that bar is restricted on channel 16, so we really, really strongly advise mariners to uh, monitor channel 16, and uh, then you'll hear, you know, they'll say for information concerning the Checo River bar, switch and listen to channel 22, and you'll switch over to 22, and they'll give you those current conditions on what's going on. But um, really, I mean, just, just be really involved and call the station. Don't hesitate to ask. Um, right. We'd rather have you do that than go out and cross right. a restricted bar or get yourself in any kind of danger. Right. And we really, really also love to see people wearing their life jackets when they when they cross the bar for uh, safety. Good. Okay. Good idea. Good idea. So when someone crosses the bar here, wh where's the channel? Where where should they stay as they go out across? Uh, there's a range um, actually over here. Uh -huh. You can see the range board right here. So when you're coming in from sea, you want to take those range boards and line them up. And if you just stay right on range, okay. um, the south side of the channel at the tips breaks a little bit more when we do get that south swell, south winds. It tends to stand up a little bit more on the south side. So if you're following range coming in, you can also follow range going out. If you just look behind you, you could do the same exact thing as you come in and line up that range. But it, it tends to be towards the north side of the channel, just a little bit more as, as where you want to stick to. Okay, okay. And then when someone goes out, should they head out to that first can or can they turn off to the right or left as they, as they get out across the bar? Uh, we always recommend that you at least go out to the uh, entrance buoy. Safe water buoy would okay. be the uh, second buoy out here. It's a CR buoy. Okay. Um, vertically striped okay. right um, okay. red and white okay and uh, that just really determines that you are in safe water you're in deep enough water where okay. you're not going to encounter any breaking waves we don't want people necessarily to come out of here on a foggy day and just kind of take a left without hitting those buoys and you know yeah uh, we got a long period and swell stands up and stuff like that in there so yeah and I see there's reefs out there too that in the fog if you didn't if you weren't aware of them you could be in trouble pretty quick right and, those and we also have um, um, we have a couple rocks that are outside the tips. We have salmon rock on the uh, north side. You can find them on your chart on your chart plotter. Okay. And then uh, there's, a, there's a rock on your south side as well. So really sticking to the center of the channel all the way till you get out to the buoys is really the safe thing to do in this area. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. What um, what kind of equipment do you have here uh, for your uh, boats that you that you? Uh we operate uh, approximately two motor lifeboats out of uh, Station Checo River. We have two small 25-foot response boats. Um, 
Our lifeboats are capable of uh, 30 foot seas, okay. 20 foot breaking surf, and 50 knots of wind. Oh um, man, that's, that's, that's a rough ocean. <laughs> they're pretty extreme. And then our small boats, our response boats that are 25 foot, they're uh, capable in 6 foot seas and 25 knots of wind. Wow. Uh, we also operate a more lifeboat up in Rogue River as far as well as a uh, 25 foot response boat up there as well. Okay, okay. So if if somebody gets in trouble out, say they they're uh, taking water on or something uh, or they've capsized, what what how long does it take you to get out there? Uh, say, say they're out by the second the second can out, out there. It really varies. Um, it'd be hard to give a, yeah. a hard steadfast every, every, time. Yeah. Um, it depends on weather conditions, sure. you know, fog, what the sea conditions are doing. But we have typically a pretty fast response. Okay. Um, most likely our boats will be launching out of here within five minutes. Okay. So, so, so it, if someone did have uh, an emergency and they found themselves in the water, what what should they do? You know, just try to stay with the boat if you can. Absolutely. Ha you, yeah, have your life jacket on, hopefully. Yeah. We want you to stay with the boat, stay with other people, tie yourselves off to them, tether together. Um, uh -huh. The more people you're with, the bigger objects you're with, the okay. easier it is for us to see you. Okay. Um, definitely, if you know your boat's taking on water, let's get those life jackets on immediately. Okay. Um, you know, if you have a life raft, get that ready. And, and most importantly, contact us early on Channel 16 or via telephone. Okay. Um, we're always monitoring channel 16 and that's the quickest, easiest way if you have VHF radio to get a hold of us. Okay. Okay. Uh, up at, um, on the Rogue River, you, you have a detachment up there. And, um, what, what months do you, do you have someone stationed up there? We operate the Rogue River from Memorial Day weekend until Labor Day weekend, but often we'll stay open a little bit later based on uh, boarding traffic in the area. Okay, okay. So up there, that's a different bar than here, isn't it? This, Absolutely. So tell us a little about that, uh, uh, launching a boat and going out, out of that, uh, that port. Uh, generally, the same rules apply. We want you to contact the station and just you know, get those current weather conditions, check your local forecast, right. check your tides, all that kind of stuff. Check the buoys, the local NOAA buoys in the area and see what they're doing. Okay. Um, and then really just take caution as you, as you cross and really be aware of your surroundings. And up there, there's a much greater chance of that bar being closed than this one, though, isn't there? Right. So, um, we were recently dredged up there, oh, okay. and it seems like it has um, made the bar passable quite a bit more. However, that bar is shallow. It's really shallow. And uh, unlike Checo River, where we face almost due south, so it takes really a south swell, south wind, to really kind of make this bar snotty, right. that bar up there is, is not facing that direction. And, and with, the, with the shallow depths, it does cause it to stand up right. quite a bit more. Right. So if, if someone is out fishing and they're not monitoring their radio, which they should, you've mentioned that, you should always have your radio on 16 uh, monitoring that, and they get locked out, what, what should they do? Um, if you have a cell phone, call 911. Yeah. Um, if, if, if you're frequently, you know, fishing in these areas, I suggest that you, uh, program local Coast Guard station yeah. into your phone prior yeah. to going. Oh, that's a good and uh, idea. it's always great to have a backup radio, yeah. get a handheld radio on board, because you never know when you're going to lose electronics on your boat, and you can just turn on that handheld, and it's going right. to make a world of difference for you. Right, right. And, and, but, but if they, and also, that's actually a really good thing, to have that, that number in your cell phone, right? So if that radio does fail to do that. But, but if someone is locked out, I mean, they're, they're out, and, they, and the bar closes, and they can't come back inside, they just have to wait out there until it opens, or? Uh, At that point, um, we want you to contact the Coast Guard Station. Yep. Absolutely, do not cross until you've contacted us, okay. and uh, we will give you further direction okay. on what to do. Right. And it's all gonna depend on what the conditions are. If we can safely get you across the bar, yep. we're gonna do so. But right. if we don't think it's safe to get you in, or we're gonna, we see any risk in it whatsoever, you know, we're going to go ahead, we're going to get out there and we're going to make the appropriate decision on, on what we need to do, whether it's to take you to a different port or stick with you out there and, until it is safe to cross, you know, maybe a changing tide or right. a drop in weather. Okay, right. Well, we had, we had some uh, fatalities in Winchester Bay a number of years ago where um, a boat was told not to come in and to stay out and they didn't. They panicked or thought they could make it, came in, capsized. 
and lost uh, like four people to serve. And uh, they would have been much safer just to stay out, wait, not try to come in and across. And, but, and we, Julie and I have seen people panic. They'll hear the bar is going to be closing and w it's much better just to stay. Stay outside, just wait, get out of ways. ways. But we've seen p panic and just start flying in, you know, and, uh, and that's, that's when accidents happen, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and we yeah. also do, um, on Channel 16, yeah. as we start to notice that, you know, in the forecast, we see weather coming in, we see the buoys yeah. starting to jump up and, and swell height or wind height. Yeah. And we, if we determine that, you know, it's looking like we're possibly right. going to be setting a restriction or yeah. something of that nature, we'll set out a broadcast. It's a deteriorating bar broadcast awesome. saying that yes. the weather is getting worse right. and that uh, we advise you to come uh, on in. That's great. Another reason to monitor that radio. Absolutely. Cool. Well, before we say goodbye, any, any last words for people that, that, uh, that take their boats out here? I would really just say just really be aware of your surroundings again and just be in contact with your local Coast Guard station and monitor the weather. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Th thank you. Cool. Awesome. Good.